We are going to become the Jokers. Yes. <laughs> Okay, two disclaimers. First, yes, France is a gorgeous country, landscapes are great, French culture is very rich, the food is great, French language is beautiful, we are the country of human rights, <clears throat> education is more or less free, healthcare is more or less free. I love many, many things about France, but today I want to focus on the things that I don't like. And to be fair, it's been quite easy to hate France lately. Second, this is happening right now, the protests and everything, and as much as I like to take some distance with my videos to, you know, see different angles, etc. I'm a human being and this is making me very angry, very emotional, very scared as well and I also wanted to convey that in the video. So I'm going to have to make a lot of contextualization before I get to the crux of the issue, the real reason why millions of people are protesting in France. Every single time I told to someone outside France what I'm about to tell you, they couldn't help but make that face I make on pretty much every thumbnail. So this video is meant for people outside of France to better understand what is going on. There have been a lot of misconceptions as to why French people have been protesting to the degree they do. The first one is the hyper-focus on the pension reform, and it is true that it is how things started. Macron's government announced that they would delay the age of retirement from 62 to 64. They said it was necessary in order to maintain our current pension system, which relies on workers being taxed a portion of their salary to pay for those who are retired. So the government's argument are that one, more people are retiring and two, people are living longer. Those two things lead to the pension system being in deficit and to correct that, they argue that we either have to increase taxes on workers to pay for pensioners or delay the age of retirement so that workers can contribute for longer. And they are right in a way, if we really want to keep the pension system as it is and avoid increasing that relatively small deficit, something needs to be done. And French people are annoying for not understanding that. In fact, for the past few months, that is what the government has been saying on TV, etc. The reform is necessary, we didn't explain it well, we're frustrated that we didn't convince the French people. And I mean, this way of talking is very condescending, isn't it? Very technical. French people aren't dumb, they don't need to be told what is right, what is wrong, what is necessary, what isn't. They very much understand what the government is trying to do. Contrary to what has circulated in French and international news, French people aren't selfishly protesting because they do not want to comply with a necessary reform. If those who say that at least try to talk to French people, they'll soon realize that it's not true. That's how things were initially presented to the general public, that is how most international news channels presented it as well. With the government on the one side having to pass a difficult yet necessary reform, and lazy, unrealistic, selfish, and sometimes violent French people on the other. But the government did not anticipate what was going to happen. For the following two months, French debunkers dissected the reform on TV and on social media and revealed the hypocrisy of the government to the people. I really want to insist on that because I think there's a lesson to be learned here. The government hoped to rely on people's common sense, aka we live longer, therefore need to work longer, to smoothly pass the reform. It didn't care to explain the mechanisms of the reform. It was necessary and shut up, that's it. They even lied on some aspects of the reform on TV, which is revealing of the contempt they have for the people. Debunkers, on the other hand, not only exposed those lies, and they not only explained in detail what the reform was really going to do, but they also educated people on how the economy works, how institutions work, and how the government manufactures consent so that we, citizens, can't be fooled again by the common sense rhetoric. That is the power of equipping citizens with knowledge, the power of democracy. Some major props for the journalists, economists, and other experts who did a fantastic job there. Now, the main argument in opposition to the reform is that the government refuses to admit that there is another option. Increasing taxes or delaying the age of retirement aren't the only two options. So what is that third option? Well, it is that of making those who have made insane profits during the pandemic and continue to do so with inflation also contributes to the pension of their workers, like it has been the case worldwide. The wealth of the top 1% has increased a lot. And on the other hand, inflation, the rise of gas prices, rising energy costs have seriously reduced people's purchasing power. This woman you see on screen is part of an anti-poverty organization and has warned the public that an increasing number of people can't use their cars anymore. They can't leave their home and only have one meal per day while LVMH billionaire Bernard Arnault just sold his $73 million private jet because he didn't like being scrutinized on social media. We cannot let those injustices happen, right? 
as we found the new rising star of the left. For those of you who knew Mélenchon, he's kind of outdated now. So as Ruffin said, Bernard Arnault is not 400,000 times worthier than the LVMH uh, seamstresses, but he is paid 400,000 times more than them. So you see, that's precisely that injustice, the audacity Macron has to ask French people to se serrer la ceinture, to tighten the belt, that made us think, wait, no, 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 that won't happen. We have already sacrificed a lot. We won't work an extra two years because Macron is too scared to ask his billionaire friends to fairly contribute to society. This is the foundation of what is happening right now, the injustice of that pension reform that has been denounced by leftists, centrists, experts. Like, the common sense is on our side, for once. <laughs> But just like it was the case with the Yellow Vest movements, which to briefly remind you, started because of the rise of gas prices, the reform was only a catalyst for something much bigger. Which means that reducing the protest to French people are lazy, they don't want to work an extra two years, reveals the ignorance of what is actually happening. From there, every lie the government said, every intervention on TV, every refusal to engage with trade unions only exacerbated that feeling of injustice fomenting in France. But really, two events put the country on fire. The first one was the use of the 49.3 article by the government in mid-March, and the second one was Macron's official interview a few days later. First, Le 49.3, the 49.3 is an article that allows the government to bypass the parliament vote. It has been used by a number of presidents a number of times, but it's becoming more and more taboo because of how anti-democratic it is. It's the 11th time Macron uses it, and this time it really, really did not sit right with the French people. Why, you may ask? Because this pension reform is something that deeply affects everyone. It has direct consequences on everyone's lives, and it's something people you know, plan ahead, eagerly. And so the introduction of a vertical, undemocratic, top-down form of power through the 49.3 is not welcome. If we truly live in democracy, we should have a say, especially on something like pensions. Macron did a citizen convention for climate a few years ago, gathering 150 randomly selected French people to establish a list of reforms that the government would then consider. That was a brilliant idea. That is what direct democracy looks like. But unfortunately, it appears that it was mostly a communication strategy, since the government only implemented a few reforms, not the most ambitious ones, obviously. Actually, many activists said it was a failure. But you know, it made sense to do something like that on a topic like climate change, which concerns everyone. And it would have made sense to do the same thing with pensions. But no, 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 neoliberal Macron doesn't want to do that. He knows that French people aren't on his side. More than any other French president I've known, he's really scared of the people. He doesn't like us. He doesn't talk to us. And forcing us to accept something that 80% of us do not want is therefore deeply undemocratic. Macron and his government say that they have been elected less than a year ago so that they have the people's legitimacy, but Macron himself recognized his lack of legitimacy right after his victory last year, saying that he understood most people voted for him to prevent the far right from accessing power. He said he would take that into consideration, but he lied. Second thing, Macron's interview. What an interview that was. I'm not joking when I say that every time this guy opened his mouth, it adds 100,000 protesters in the street. The interview was chaotic, he did the usual, we didn't explain it well to French people, he tried to turn French people against each other by opposing protesting workers to those who are unemployed but receive benefits. He implied that people's frustration with the reform was due to the fact that they didn't work during the pandemic and kind of struggled to go back to this work-oriented mentality or something like that. And finally, something that really set me off, he compared the protest to the January 6 US Capitol attack on the basis that French people refused to respect Macron's democratic legitimacy. What a shame. What a shame, honestly. 80% of French people are against the reform. Millions of people in the streets. Manual workers, health workers, clerks, executives, even influencers. People across the political spectrum. You are pathetic. That's what Ruffin repeated in a long, passionate speech he delivered at the Parliament. Quote, What hope, what vision, what eagerness for the future do you convey? Nothing. Only this little, trivial and shabby reform. It's mediocre. You are pathetic. To all the people who keep the country going, to all the nurses, the cashiers, the manual workers, to those people who wake up early every day to go to work, what do you give them in return? Two years. Two years. How ambitious of you. You are pathetic.
We need to channel all the energy, all the money, all the workforce, all the expertise to fight climate change. But instead of doing that, you block the country. For what? To save 0.1% of the GDP. That is your priority. You are pathetic. End of the quote. I like that he reversed the paradigm there, saying that the government blocks the country, not the protesters. Probably also seen the pictures of the mountains of garbage in the street of Paris. That's another beautiful symbol because it makes the invisible work of garbage collectors visible. And maybe some of you even saw this video of techno-activist Mathilde Caillard dancing and singing the slogan Retraite, climat, même combat, meaning retirement, climate, same fight. I guess you start to see that it goes beyond the pension reform. People not only demand that they keep those two years of retirement, we demand that we keep the planet and all forms of living, including human beings, alive for as many years as possible. And that requires that we completely change our productivist model. Macron and his government also have a vision for the future, and it's called hardcore neoliberalism, baby. <laughs> It is necessary, it is the pragmatic option, they say, with PowerPoints and Excel documents to prove you they are right. Anyone who does not agree with that, with that very cold approach of politics, with that ideology, is repressed. The parliament is repressed through the use of the 49.3. Trade unions are repressed because Macron doesn't want to talk to them. And finally, protesters are repressed through police brutality. So what do we need to do to be heard? How is this a functioning democracy? We tried everything, they blocked everything. I want to elaborate on the police violence because it is getting really serious. In the past few weeks, images, videos of police brutality have circulated online. Police officers have used warfare weapons, they have abused of tear gas, intimidated, insulted, threatened, undressed protesters in the street. They rode their motorbikes on protesters, hit them with their baton. They have arrested hundreds of peaceful protesters who clearly did not do anything. Every single day, there are new images of police brutality and what does the government have to say to that? Nothing. When in Parliament, a member read the testimony of a young woman who had been sexually assaulted, the Home Secretary Damana accused himself of uh, assault and rape, dismissed the testimony and said full support to the police. I mean, what the f France? The country of human rights. Saying full support to the police after someone read a horrible testimony, what does that mean? That means go guys, have fun, you won't have to face any consequences for that. The absence of condemnation is extremely concerning. France is not a police state, it's a democracy. And it's not just Darmanin, most parliament members who support Macron are also incapable of denouncing police brutality. Even international NGOs like Amnesty International are actually concerned about what is going on in this country. On the other hand, every time a left-wing leader is invited on TV, the first question they get asked is, condamnez-vous les violences? Do you condemn acts of violence, and they don't mean police violence, no, they refer to the relative violence of a minority of protesters called the Black Blocs. So the government says that the police protects um, peaceful protesters, which, as the video shows, as I'm about to tell you, is clearly not the case. The police violence only reflects the violence of the government. And as Ruffin said, it's a shame when a French person hits another French person, whether it's a protester or police officer. So I went protesting last week with a friend and, you know, it was a great experience. Trade unions were there, workers, young people, old people, universities, pensioners. I saw some politicians I like as well. People were singing, dancing. We didn't see many, if not any, police officers which I think helped uh, relax the atmosphere. And so as we were collectively moving forward, someone put fire to a bin 20 meters away from us and the firemen arrived, took care of it for safety, no big deal. And then, I kid you not, I looked around, looked at my feet, and when I looked back towards the fire, I saw two rows of police officers with the baton, helmet, shield and everything I had suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Now you have to imagine, there were a lot of people. We were all standing next to each other in a medium-sized street, so immediately the atmosphere completely changed. The slogans went from we are here, we are here, even if Macron doesn't want it, we are here, to everybody hates the police. The tension was rising, but I want to make clear that on the one side, um, you had fully armed and protected people, police officers, and on the other side, very average, unprotected, unarmed protesters, including teenagers, old people, there was even a guy in a wheelchair, and a woman as well, with uh, crutches. 
And then all of a sudden, the police rushed to us. They they forced us to run away, quite literally. My friend and I went in a little street with a bunch of other average people, including that guy with the wheelchair, and waited for a quarter of an hour, I'd say. Then we progressively went back to where we used to be, and what we saw was quite scary, to be honest. Two new rows of police officers had appeared in another adjacent street. At that very moment, my heart started to beat really, really fast, but at the same time, I really felt angry and started to sing Everybody Hates the Police because how dare they push us like that for no reasons when we've been peaceful this whole time. For me, they were the same people I saw in the videos and they disgusted me. The story is not over yet because as we were waiting for the situation to evolve and be able to resume the march, I couldn't see very much because they were quite far away at that point. But what I saw is that they rushed and pushed us again while they threw tear gas bombs without even warning us. So no, when I was there, the police did not protect me or the people around me, peaceful protesters. I ended up with tear gas burning my eyes, my heart beating super fast. Funnily enough, the people who actually helped us were the black blocks who created passages for us to escape as best as we could. In that moment of panic, you forget about politics, honestly. And I did feel protected by them. I trusted them, not the police. After 20 minutes, the road was cleared again, um, things went back to normal, the police officers disappeared, and we continued the march with the knowledge that, you know, they might reappear anytime. One of the questions I got asked the most on Instagram when I said that I would make this video um, is who's benefiting from all of this? Well, the government says that all the chaos that the left is causing in parliament and in the streets, again, we talk about 70 to 80% of French people who are against the reform, all of that they say is serving the far right. At least that's what Home Secretary Darmanin, uh, who, so that you know, who once said that far right Marine Le Pen wasn't tough enough on immigration. People were shocked when he said that, but it makes so much sense now. <laughs> he caricatures anyone who does not believe like him into a terrorist. He's the one who talked about eco-terrorism to refer to the civil disobedience of climate protesters, and now he talks about intellectual terrorism. Basically, anyone who criticizes him is a terrorist. <laughs> As philosopher Marc Crépon said, this strategy of calling every opponent a terrorist is exactly what Putin does. And because the French Human Rights League have raised the alarm, he now implies that he would cut subsidies for the Human Rights League? Wow. <laughs> To a lesser degree, but still in alignment with dominant statements on protesters, Macron referred to the millions of people who went in the streets as the crowd, rebels, not as the people. Words matter, and the government's choice of words to refer to his opponents is deeply alarming. Darmanin, in particular, has been mobilizing the rhetoric of the far right for many years now. As a state official, he has participated in standardizing that language, and on the other hand, caricaturing the left wing coalition as a group of extremists terrorists. I don't know if I should laugh or cry because there is nothing extremist about the current left-wing coalition. So to answer the question, who's benefiting from all of this? Well, it might actually be true. It might be the far right, as it was the case with the Yellow Vest movement. Uh, the far right populist discourse managed to channel that anger into support for their cause. And it might happen again here. It is true that people who went in the streets seem to be mostly left-wing. And it's great because all of the protests kind of um, encouraged, developed that left-wing consciousness. However, the majority of people didn't make it to the streets and they could be the ones who potentially vote for Le Pen. The ambiguous relative silence of Marine Le Pen's party and its complete absence from the activity of the protests further allowed it to establish itself as a respectable party, ready to govern. In fact, it is mind-blowing to see how the government, not just Darmanin, has shown more and more sympathy for the respectable far right in comparison to the chaotic left. And again, there is nothing revolutionary about the current left in coalition. Maybe moving to a new republic, the Sixth Republic, with more direct democracy, but other than that. But anyway, Macron is now deeply unpopular. I don't think anything could save him. He reached a point where he had to send police officers to arrest a random woman who insulted him on Facebook and also gave an interview to a kid's magazine. I think someone needs to send him that woman who performed that weird poem for Putin. You remember that? There must be some unresolved childhood trauma going on. If I were that woman, I'd probably say something like, Emmanuel, I know it's easier to be right-wing than left-wing. We live in a society that constantly drags us towards the easy option because it's harder to resolve issues of injustice than it is to resolve issues of order. We adopt conservatism because it's easier to understand what already happens, therefore it's easier to hold a right-wing discourse than a left-wing discourse. 
And because all societies encourage us to put less and less efforts into developing our own knowledge, our understanding of the world, we are more and more likely to choose the easy option on the side of order rather than the side of justice. I've received a lot of comments from people across the globe saying I wish insert nationality was like the French, we don't protest like you do, and yes, it's true that we have a very long tradition of protesting, but that tradition is the result of the existence of structures that know how to organize people. So don't wait for a protest to occur in your city, you can start organizing at a very small level with a group of friends at your college campus, and then gather more and more people around the cause. Also make sure to follow organizations that already exist around you and show up when they need you. Protesting is most of the time really fun, you get to meet new people, you get to sing, you really feel like you're part of something, and that is a feeling we seriously lack, you know, the sense of, that sense of community basically. The last thing I'll say is that all the protests that are happening at the moment in France are purely reactionary. They seek to keep the rights that have been acquired in the past. That's why even if the text gets removed, it won't be a full victory, just a return to what it used to be before it all started. So it's also important that, on top of resisting neoliberal institutions, we also campaign for progressive alternatives, that we reverse that paradigm, meaning that we force our governments to react to us not the other way around. The reforms show that, yet again, neoliberal elites want to oversee the management of our future, but what we, the youth, ask for is to let us imagine it. So yeah, I guess that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you better understand what is at stake in France at the moment. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, if it's not done already. You can also support me on Patreon, we have a Discord community with live streams, a book club, etc. Actually, I'd like to say thank you to my patrons for their support. I'm trying to wrap that up as quickly as possible. Batteries. I'm running out of battery. And a special thank to top tier patients. Obviously, it could be for the end, but a big thank you to Patricia, Marcelo, Christopher, Ion, Donage, Ren, Alex, Sam, Manuel, Dakota, Jay, Benjamin, Oswald, Perry, and Carla. Other than that, I'll see you very soon. Salut!